Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Bryce and we are doing Common Core Algebra 2, the non-regents version. We are doing Unit 2, Section 2. It's called Function Notation. We talked a little bit about it in the last section. This is the QR code if you don't understand what I'm saying. Hey, listen to the guy who made these fantastic worksheets. Functions are fundamental tools, like a hammer, a wrench, a screwdriver, a drill, that convert inputs to the value of independent variables, that's the input, to outputs, the values of dependent variables. The output depends on the input. What comes out depends on what you put in. There's a special notation that's commonly used to show this conversion process. The first exercise will illustrate this notation in the context of formulas. Evaluate each of the following given the function definition and inputs. Hmm, I wonder what the input is for A. I wonder where the input is for A. Oh, there it is right there. So all you do is everywhere you see an X, you put a three. Five, that's an X. So we put a three. Five times three minus two, 15 minus two, lucky number 13. Five times negative two minus two is negative 12. Five times negative two is negative 10, minus two is negative 12. Got it. So maybe you're working ahead. Three squared plus four, lucky number 13 again. Zero squared plus four is four. Now, whenever you do these squares, you can put them in parentheses. If it's negative, you definitely want to put it in parentheses. Two cubed. Okay, there's the x. You put a three there. Two times two is four. Times two is eight. Two to the negative two. Doesn't say we can use a calculator. Doesn't say we can't use a calculator. Guess what? It's one fourth. When it's a negative exponent, you put it under the fraction bar. Although this notation could be confused with multiplication, holy cosmokies, of course it's confused with mul multiplication because this looks like f times x, right? No, we have to know what world we're living in. What's the context of the problem? Output is y. This is the rule. That's the function notation. Okay. I often told people when we started doing Common Core that y was the same thing as f of x and f of x the same thing as y. Not quite. Depends on what, what world we're living in. Function notation, f of x, g of x, n of x. Recall that function rules commonly come in one of three forms. Equations, like we showed, graphs, and tables. The next few exercises will illustrate function notation with these three forms. Okay. Boiling water at 212 degrees. Oh, it must be at sea level. Fahrenheit with no salt in the water. Just pure water. Little bit of contamination. Otherwise, it actually won't boil. Interesting fact. Okay, anyway. Boiling water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit is left at room temperature. The room is 65 degrees. The room is 65 degrees. Fahrenheit begins to cool. The boiling water begins to cool, not the room. The temperature readings are taken each hour and given in the table below. The scenario is temperature T is a function of both the number hours H. Temperature is a function of H. The temperature depends on how long has passed. Okay, instantaneously, instantaneously, it's still 212. After an hour, it goes down to 141, and so on. Evaluate t of 2. Let me see. t of 2. t of 2 equals 104. The temperature after 6 hours is 68 degrees. A little degree mark up there. For what value of h is the temperature of H, T of H, equal to 76 degrees? Hmm, when in the world is it 76 degrees? Which one's the degrees? Which one's the degrees? Which one? Oh, down here. 
integer t of h's. So t of 4 equals 76 or h equals 4. That's what we want. Between what two consecutive hours will the temperature be 100 degrees? La 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 la. When will it be 100 degrees? Uh, too hot? Let me try this again. There we go. Too hot? Too hot? Too hot? Too cold? Too hot? Too cold? Too hot? Too cold? Between two and three. Two and three. Read the question, write the answer the way it wants. Between what two consecutive hours? It's the second hour. And, yes, that little scribble was an and. Yeah, the third. There we go, had to look at it. The third hour. Any questions? Make sure you ask me in class. Let's turn the page. The function y equals f of x is defined by the graph. Answer the following questions based on this graph. What's the function value at negative 1? What's the function value at negative 1? Let me see. Um, function value at negative 1. What's that spot? That spot's the x spot. The x, x spot. What's the function value at negative 1? Okay. That's zero right there. See, that's zero. That's negative one. Looks like it's at zero. It's zero high. Zero high. So, f of negative one is zero. The output is zero. The y value is zero. What's well, f of one? There's zero. There's one. And, and where's the graph? Point way up there. It's up. One, two, three, four. Four high. Four high. What's the y value? What's the y value when f is one, y is four? Okay, what's the function value of 5? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So f, the function value at 5 is negative 4. Slam dunk. Evaluate the function value at 0. Okay, function value at 0. Let me see. Uh, when x is 0, <clears throat> 1, 2, 3. f of 0 equals 3. What's special? about that. What does it always correspond to? Well, there can be, uh, it corresponds to the y-intercept. It crosses. That's what intercept means. It crosses. That's where it crosses the y-axis. F of zero will always be the y-intercept. What'd you say? I said F of zero always will be the y-intercept. Always? Well, if the y-intercept exists, as long as the function is not undefined at zero. Okay, there's always an exception. Okay, wits. What does, what values of x will solve the equation? The function value at x equals zero. What did you say? I said the function value of x equals zero. Um, remember, I kind of said, yeah, we talked about when we started teaching the Common Core a couple years ago, we said this is y. Okay, when is y going to be zero? Um, there. This is when y is zero, when it's zero high. So what values? We have a negative one. So x equals negative one. We have a one, two, three. X equals 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 it is. And X is 7. Now, why don't we do that in mm -mm, negative 1, 3, and 7. Mm -mm, mm. Okay? Several ways to write the answer. Between what two consecutive integers does the largest solution to f of x equaling 3 lie? What? Between what two consecutive integers does the largest solution of f equal negative, uh, positive 3, f of x equaling positive 3 lie? Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So we need the largest, the largest. Between what two consecutive integers does the 
the largest solution line. Okay, so we have a solution there. Is that the largest one? Let me see. Uh, that looks like about a negative one, right? That's negative one. Uh, that's a positive one. And then here we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, between seven and eight. Between seven and eight, between seven and eight, that's the biggest one. So yeah, negative one isn't the biggest. Uh, what was the other one? Like uh, two and between seven and eight. Seven and eight. Between what two consecutive integers does the largest solution to f of x equaling three line? Seven is less than x, which is less than eight. Or you could put less than or equal to. For all values x such that, na, 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 there we go. That horrible thing there, if I draw it nice and neat, looks like that. That horrible thing there, if I draw it neater, looks like that. I called braces. Brace yourself there. Exercise four for a function g of x. Uh, it is known that g of negative 2 equals 7, which is the following, must lie on the graph of g of x. Let me see. What do we have here? We have the x and we have the y. That's the x. That's the y. Negative 2 is the x. Nope. Negative 2 is the x. Nope. Negative 2 is the x. Negative 2 is the x. What's the y? 7 Aruni. Physics students drop the ball from the top of a 50 foot high building. The model of the height is function with that. Okay. Use the tables on your calculator to determine the nearest tenth of a second when the ball hits the ground. Provide tabular outputs to support your answer. We're going to do this one in class together because it's 12 minutes. This is Mr. Brace signing out. I'll see you later.